Diabolical Tales. Starring Jack Ferguson and another exciting story of dangerous intrigue, fantastic adventure, and sinister circumstance. Diabolical Tales. Many of the incidents in the story you're about to hear are based on the actual experiences and authentic records of NSA Operative 132, who for many years has investigated the men from within the Earth. Here is our star, Jack Ferguson, as Operative 132. My name is not important, but you can call me Operative 132, or just O-132. I work on an above top secret project called Agartha, and this is my story. In a moment, listen for Jack Ferguson as Operative 132, Government Man. But first, a word from our sponsor. Into the deepest jungles went Pushman Toymakers looking for something new. And the incredible secret they brought back is just for you. The Dr. Witch Head Shrinkers Kit. With plastic flesh, a mixing cauldron, and a petrifying potion. Just pour it into the mold and in minutes you can add monster hair. Paint it with a coloring kit included or make up your own decorations. In 24 hours, the heads will shrink, shrink, shrink down. And now you have a shrunken head for all occasions. Collect them, swap them with your head shrinker friends, and leave them hanging on the door of your enemies as a warning. You can always cook up more heads with the Dr. Witch Head Shrinkers Kit from Pushman Toys. It's for boys. And now, Diabolical Tales. This above top secret report from Project Agartha is marked the Kagra Syndrome. Do you want a cup of Joe, 0132? Only if you're getting one, Agent Cooper. Two cups, coming up. The date was Tuesday, September 8, 1953. I had recently returned from a top-secret UFO operation in Nevada, helping out some old colleagues from my Project Grudge days. And apparently, a lot had happened while I was away. Agent Cooper reported of an alleged incident with Xanth in a movie theater, the strange activities of James Moore, CEO of Amalgamated Technologies, and a new lead in our search for the man from within the Earth who had infiltrated our government, whose real name was Zajim was provided by the otherwise suspicious FBI Assistant Director Smith. After months of silence and many questions after my last encounter with the mysterious Xanth, I had some reservations about all this. I sat reviewing Agent Cooper's report when he walked back into the office with two mugs of the FBI's finest. So, did General Burton say anything about my report? About the two men in black in the movie theater? Or about the CEO of Amalgamated Technologies? I'm not going to submit your report, Agent Cooper. Huh? Why not? Well, let's just say it's on the subjective side. Subjective? H how so? Well, you acknowledged that you had had a few drinks. And shortly thereafter, you started hearing voices and following shadowy figures. Oh, 132, it was real. All of it. I wasn't drunk. I had two swigs of my wife's vodka. And aside from Kate, no other witnesses except yourself. But you were the only one on the report from the automat dust-up from a few months back. You were alone. I was alone. What's the difference? Because I'm SC-7 and you're SC-4. That's the difference, Agent Cooper. Wait, hold on, O-132. Kate was there, too. But Kate can't be cited in your report. Why not? Because she's your wife and she was drunk! Drunk? 
What do you mean drunk? I'm sorry, Agent Cooper. It's just been my experience that they need objective reports. Yours has too much subjectivity. It's not that I don't believe you, it's just that- It sure doesn't sound like you believe me, O-132. If you think I was drunk, I wasn't. And I'm not making any of this up. The last person I thought I'd have to convince was you. Agent Cooper, wait. So I'm SC4. That should still give me some credibility, right? Of course it does. And I should have said, I'm not going to submit your report just yet. You're going to sit on it? While this Zuzax and Xanth are running around out there? No, we're not going to sit on it. We're going to follow through with your investigation and try to gain some evidence, then add more to your report and submit it then. Will that work for you? (sighs) Works for me, boss. I'm not your boss. General Burton is your boss. You said that General Burton used to be your boss. Now he is our boss? A man I'm not even authorized to speak to? All right, that's enough, Agent Cooper. Eventually, you'll get that authorization, but for right now, I'm the only one who can talk to him. I can appreciate your impatience to get more information about all this, but consider yourself lucky, as most SC4 personnel aren't allowed to work on above-top-secret projects. Just you, because of your previous experience. So instead of looking at this as if I'm conspiring against you, consider that I'm honoring my duty and my security clearance by withholding some information from you. So, you are my boss. I'm your supervisor. How's that? All right. Anyway, first, before we start looking into this amalgamated technologies bit again, we've got to work on Zajim. So Assistant Director Smith says this suspect Ivan is Zajim. But I'm saying let's take another look at Assistant Director Smith. Especially before we start chasing another phantom with a different name. After that, we can check on James Moore, CEO at Amalgamated. That work? I guess. If you're okay with those guys out there killing innocent civilians while we take a closer look at one of our own. (sighs) We can work on that after Zajim. Right. Let's start by going over to see Smith. A very bitter Agent Cooper and I visited Assistant Director Smith's office, only to find him out for the day. So Agent Cooper and I spent the next week shadowing him, watching him go from his modest home in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. to work at FBI headquarters, along with otherwise normal stops at grocery stores and service stations. Agent Cooper had managed to have an old friend in personnel pull some of Smith's files, provided that we had them back by the end of the day. You get them? I got them, 0132. Okay, let's see what you got. Assistant Director Smith's records just showed that he was a World War II hero, had worked for the FBI since 1947. He became an assistant director in January 1952, only a few months before I met him. And his wife had recently divorced him. He didn't even show up at the final hearing. But I can relate to that. I didn't show up to mine either. There's not too much that's suspicious here, Agent Cooper. He sure acts suspicious sometimes. He sure does. Okay, let's get all these documents back to personnel. We've seen all we need. Oh? Agent Cooper, I think we can believe Assistant Director Smith. So I think now we move on. Next, Agent Cooper and I went over to his apartment for a bite to eat. I planned to ask his wife, Kate, a few questions about her recollections in the movie theater. Kate, 0132 is going to ask you some questions about the men in the movie theater. Huh. Men? In the movie theater? Yeah, you remember. The night last month we went to the movies? Oh, yeah. You didn't want to see Titanic. We took a seat at the table as Kate scurried around the stove, finishing up. It smelled like chicken. Are you cooking chicken, Mrs. Cooper? Well, it's supposed to be chicken a la king. But somebody forgot to pick up the flour from the store last night. I'm sorry, Kate. 
so, uh, this is just Chickenella regular. Well, what sort of questions do you want to ask me? Well, for starters, did you see two strange men dressed all in black? Dressed in black? Well, I don't know what they were wearing. They were just... loud. Did you hear what they were saying? N no I don't remember. I was just trying to pay attention to the movie. Kate, you don't remember any of what they said? I thought you told me that you did. One of them was, uh, yelling that he could see. That's all I can remember. And then I went to the bathroom and when I came back, you were gone. And so were they. Ah. Uh -huh. Wow, this is really good chicken, Mrs. Cooper. Aw, thank you. You're not eating? I had a late lunch. Well, if that's all, Mr. Secret Operative, I have to catch some beauty rest. Of course, Mrs. Cooper. Thanks for the dinner, Kate. It's really good. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think? The chicken a la regular isn't bad. No, I mean about my report. I still don't think she's a reliable witness. I'm sorry, Agent Cooper. So I'm an unreliable witness, too? I didn't say that. But when I first saw a man from within the Earth and I wasn't even a part of Project Agartha, you believed me. I'm not saying I don't believe you, Agent Cooper. Let's not start that again. Then what are you saying, then? Ever heard of Kagras Syndrome, Agent Cooper? Cap what? Kagras Syndrome. No, what is it? It's a psychological condition where you believe that a person that you know has been replaced by an identical imposter. I don't think... Listen, last November you were stunned by Zong's electro-incinerator. We don't know what long-term effects that advanced weapon has on a human brain. But you were stunned too, back in June. Yet I'm not claiming to see doppelgangers running around in our investigation. So you think I'm suffering from a psychological condition? I'd like you to go get checked out for Kagura Syndrome. This is nonsense, O132. Once we rule out that you aren't suffering from Kagura Syndrome, then we'll move on and follow up with James Moore, CEO at Amalgamated Technologies. I don't understand why we can't just do that now. Because we look more suspicious going in there without knowing we're clear on our end. I don't want to mess this up. All right, fine. What, am I off the detail until I clear this test or whatever? I've already got you scheduled for an appointment with an expert in the field. It's tomorrow morning at 930, so take a couple of days off, and when I get the results back from the doctor, we'll take a look again. That work for you? Being relieved of duty? Not really. Just a couple of days off, Agent Cooper. It's a measure of national defense. Except it's not really. It's not a measure of national defense. I'm gonna say it is. All right? Are you sure? Pretty sure. I'll see myself out. Thank Kate again for the dinner. Good night, Cooper. Night. Eh. I knew Agent Cooper wasn't gonna like that. But before we go busting in on more folks in the private sector, or start following up on this suspect Ivan in the Office of Naval Intelligence, I had to be certain that Agent Cooper wasn't just suffering from some kind of delusional state. But one thing's for sure, he's gonna be sore with me for a little while. We'll be back with Operative 132 in Diabolical Tales after a word from our sponsor. Hello there, I'm Bruce Abernathy, the star of Hey There, What's Your Poison? on the Dumont Television Network. It's been moved to Friday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So don't forget to tune in. But now I'm here to tell you about Triple X Vodka. It's made from only the finest American ingredients, and it's pretty easy to find on those lower shelves. 
And remember, Triple X Vodka donates 2% of all profits to pro-democracy movements against existing communist regimes. So take it from me, Bruce Abernathy. When you take a drink or two of Triple X Vodka, you're absolutely doing your part to defend the American way of life. Triple X Vodka. You'd better enjoy it. And now we're back with Jack Ferguson as Operative 132 in Diabolical Tales, Project Agartha. There I was, back to my every second Thursday home. The Avalon Motel on Route 185 in Chevy Chase, Maryland. It was now the fourth day off for Agent Cooper, and we were due to get the considered results of his psychological assessment tomorrow morning. I knew he was planning to show up to work. Hello, Mr. Mariano. Ah, uh, Mr. Mapletop. Always on schedule, you. <laughs> How you doing tonight, sir? Not too bad, you. Well, you know what they say, Mr. Mapletop. I can't complain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do know what you're saying. So let me guess, you want some ziti and some pasta with a nice little marinara sauce, is that my right? Well, I was thinking more like a room for the night. <laughs> of course you were, and you know I've got you there. But you see, my brother Tony has a restaurant and I'm trying to help him out, you know? Tony's restaurant is your brother's? That's it! How did you know, Mr. Mapletorp? What I couldn't tell Mr. Mariano is that I knew Tony's restaurant was a known local mafia front. Lucky guess, Mr. Mariano. Okay, I just need you to sign here. And there's your key. Room 103. Yeah. Is there a problem? It's your usual room. Usual in that I've used it the last two times I was here. I don't like usual. Well, wouldn't you believe it, but I'm actually all sold out tonight. But I left 103 open for you as a regular every second Thursday. So it's all I got, Mr. Mapletorp. I guess I'll have to take it. Yeah, so like I was saying, you look hungry, Mr. Mapletorp. Go to my brother's restaurant and make sure you tell him that I sent you. Maybe I will, Mr. Mariano. You can call me Benny. Okay. Thanks, Benny. I always tried to switch up the room number I stayed in, but the past month here I've ended up with room 103. I didn't like any repetition if I could help it. Anyway, I dropped off my bag in my room. Mr. Mariano was right about one thing. I sure was hungry. No disrespect to Benny's brother Tony and his restaurant, but I didn't feel like being under surveillance tonight. So I went down the road to a steakhouse. It was on the way back when I first noticed something amiss. As I drove closer to the motel, I saw a series of really bright flashes of light in the lobby. Very strange, it didn't seem to be affecting the lighting in the rest of the complex. It was almost like the effect that the men from within the Earth's electro incinerators make. But at a motel? I slowly pulled up the car to the front and parked. From the parking lot, the office seemed to be fine. I could vaguely see a person, Mr. Mariano, behind the counter. But just to be sure, I decided to check in on him. Somebody started up a 1949 Mercury Coupe that had been parked a few cars down. Didn't realize anybody had been in there. I could see the outline of a man wearing a fedora when he turned on the lights and pulled away. I watched as he drove off up Route 185 and cursed myself for not thinking to get his plate number. Mr. Mariano was still standing behind the counter, just standing there, staring forward. Hmm, strange. So I made my way inside. As soon as I stepped foot into the lobby, he straightened up and forced a smile. Good evening, sir. Care for a room? What the? Hey there, Benny. Just got back from my dinner. Wanted to check in on you. Check in on 
Me? Oh, of course. Something definitely amiss here. Not just with Benny. I could smell a faint but familiar odor in the air. I understand now. Uh, yes. Yes, of course. Care for a room, sir? But I've already got a room, Benny. Oh, that's right. You do. Did something happen in here, Benny? Why do you say that? Smells like some kind of electrical discharge. Was there a fire? A fire? No. What room number do I have, Benny? Uh, just give me a moment, up, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh... Edward Maplethorpe. Yes, correct. So listen, I went to your brother's restaurant for dinner, but I forgot the name of it after I left. What was it called again? Uh, my brother's, uh, oh, it's his restaurant. Yeah, but the, the, the name is, um... Yeah. Mariano's Restaurant. Mariano's Restaurant. That's what I thought. You still looking for that room number? Yes. While we're on the subject of our names, what's Benny short for? Benny short for? Yeah, you told me less than an hour ago to call you Benny. My name is Giovanni Mariano. So you don't know? Benny short for? What is Benny short for? Never mind. I'm moving past that now. Mr. Maplethorpe, of course. That's your name. Here's your card. Of course. It's 103. Thanks, Benny. You have a good night. The man seemed to have no memory of seeing me less than an hour earlier. His accent seemed to be missing. And he missed the name of his brother's restaurant. He told me it was Tony's. Uh, too many mistakes. And I hated to admit to myself that it was very similar to Agent Cooper's encounter with James Moore, CEO of Amalgamated Technologies, last month while I was away. So, I got my bag out of the room, dropped the key in the overnight box, and drove off in search of another motel for the night. But there would need to be a follow-up on Mr. Mariano. The next morning, I walked over to Agent Cooper's office at FBI headquarters. Good morning, Agent Cooper. Glad to have you back. Thanks, O-132. I'm glad my test results showed I wasn't suffering from Capgras syndrome. Capgras syndrome. You weren't. Because last night I had a couple of weird encounters with somebody I knew. I think it's like your incident with James Moore, CEO. Something is going on. Oh, really? I don't know. I don't know if I can believe you. So I had myself checked out like Agent Cooper, and I was not suffering from Kagra syndrome. That meant there was something really weird going on with the people I'd come into contact with recently. Was it some concerted effort by Xanth and the men from within the Earth? Or some other threat? Unknown. What could we prove? Not much yet. But one thing's for sure, I wasn't going to be staying at the Avalon Motel anytime soon. This is Jack Ferguson. Some of the stories we bring you are so strange and fantastic that it's hard to believe that it really happened. For obvious reasons, some of the names, dates, and localities have been changed. But our stories are based on the real-life experiences of Operative 132, G-Man. And they did happen here. We hope you'll join us again next time for another adventure. Until then, remember folks, the men from within the Earth are among us. episode of the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour starred Jack Ferguson, Brian Bedell, Kat Peterson, Paul Warner, E.B. Stearns, Kyle Stroud, Brandon Kane, and Steve DeMonico as Mr. Mariano. The original score was by Troy Sterling Neese. The mix was by Dan Jeremy Brooks of Apocalypse Cow Studios. It was written by Brandon Kane 
produced by Christian Wheeler, Troy Sterling Neese, Don Guerin, and Dan Jeremy Brooks. The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour is presented by Cosmic Control Productions. I'm Jack Ferguson, and I play Operative 132 on Diabolical Tales Radio Hour. While our show is a lot of fun to create, each episode costs a lot of time and money to produce. So if you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour on your preferred medium in order to catch new episodes as they're released. And if you have the means, please consider donating to our show at patreon.com slash diabolicaltales. Patrons will help us continue to produce the show, and we'll also give you access to bonus materials and additional content. You can also find us at diabolicaltales.com. And thank you for listening to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour. 